Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you are having a restful day already, getting ready for some math. Going to expand your mind in these crazy times. So again, we've got Math 8, Lesson 10.2. I can use the properties of exponents to simplify expressions. Now, what we talked about previously is being able to write them out, expand it, if you will. Today, we're going to show you some rules, almost some shortcuts, if you will, to try and go ahead and finalize or expressing your math problems. All right, so we've got some rules here, some general ideas using some variables, and then we'll get into some specific problems. So again, with uh, these trying times, you can take notes as however you see fit, but still practicing those good note-taking habits might be very, very beneficial for your high school year coming up in the fall. So you can go ahead and pause the video again to go ahead and make your data table here. Really not a data table. It's just like a data table, though. If you notice, it's a 4x4 four four grid, and you've got some boxes to fill in. So I'll pause the video for you to let you do that. Oh, welcome back. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start off with our product rule. The product rule says if we have the same base, so imagine the same letter A, the same letter X, or even the same digit like a 4, it tells us since it has the same base, I can use the rule that would allow me to add my exponents. <clears throat> now, this rule gets commonly confused with many students that Instead of adding their exponents, they are really supposed to multiply. So they multiply, but they're supposed to add. So got to be really careful of these rules, making sure you're using the correct one. So if you notice here on a quick example, you've got the same base of 3. Therefore, using our rule, I'm going to go ahead and add my exponents to have a 2 plus 4, which obviously gives me an exponent of 6. So it's 3 to the 6th power, as we commonly state. Pretty basic, but again, where some students get confused, again, if you were to accidentally multiply the 2 and 4 because they see a multiplication sign here, that's when they get an exponent of 8, which is what you do not want. So please be careful there. Expanding that idea, we're going to go ahead and show you that as an alternative, and we'll talk about that as we continue on. But if you were to expand this, 3 squared would remember be 3 times 3. 3 to the 4th power, you write out many 3's, you count them up, you got 6 of them. Now the one difficult thing about the expansion is that when you have an exponent greater than even just a 7, sometimes my students in previous years, they would expand it and then they would miscount. So therefore they were off by like 1 for their exponent. So be really careful with that when we show you the alternative method. Alright, so let's go ahead and practice that first rule really quick. If you notice, we've got the same base of 2. Therefore, we simply need to add our exponents. I know it may seem silly, but again, still practicing really good work habits. Do the 4 plus 2. Everybody knows what 4 plus 2 is, but again, when students get it confused, they think it's 4 times 2. So we have 2 for our base and 6 for our exponent, 2 to the 6th power. The expansion, as I was telling you before, is writing out a bunch of the same bases. So on 2 to the 4th power, you would write it out 4 of them, and then 2 squared, you would write out 2 of them. You count them up, you've got 6, so therefore the exponent is 6. Now that expansion idea is helpful for some students, but many students who are careful, they can get the rules, which really speeds things up. All right, so let's go ahead and pause a moment. Not really pause, if you will, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to try and go ahead and try example B and C as I enjoy some of my cold brew coffee. <sighs> With my protein powder. Some students, when we were at normal class, would ask me, do you have one of those every day? Yes. Got to stay fit, get those muscles. Be awesome. All right, looking at B, you should have had plenty of time. Now, what some students may hopefully remember is what is here. So, for example, I've got an exponent of 6. On the previous example, I had an exponent of 2 and an exponent of 4. So what exponent goes here? Oh, yeah, super geniuses. That is a 1. So, therefore, I would do 1 plus 6, which would give me, obviously, an exponent of 7. Notice how negative 5 is still in the parentheses like we talked about on lesson 
Very nice. If you wanted to write it out, again, it would be a bunch of negative fives. Totally up to you. I like the rule. It's easier, quicker for me, but you got to remember the difference between the rules as we progress through our lessons. All right, like we discussed on 10.1, there are no parentheses, so therefore a negative one is in the front. Now, some students, more advanced, if you will, would say, I don't need to really write that one, Mr. Murillo. Do I have to write it? No, you don't have to write it. But we do have to write the one or think about the one for our exponent for that first a. It's a to the first power plus a to the fourth power gives me a to the fifth power. And then the b, you've got a first power, a first power. So when you add it up, obviously you got a second power. Or some people may say, Mr. Murillo, it's just two of them. So therefore, b squared. Perfectly fine. All right. We've showed you two methods on this one, the rule and the expansion. All right, go back to your uh, table of rules, and we're going to go ahead and skip to power rule one. So this is the one that I was telling you about, that some students get confused between your product rule. So the key is when you have it as the inside-outside, inside-outside. That's what I like to always tell my students with a little trick thinking is, if I have an exponent inside the parentheses and an exponent outside the parentheses, then it is going to actually be a multiplication of exponents. Where on our previous one, where the product rule there is, no, there's no parentheses. I think that's the easiest way to tell the difference. So quick sample. Notice it's the exact same base as the previous one written there, the exact same exponents, but since it is inside outside, you are going to multiply your exponents. So two times four is a simple exponent of eight. So three to the eighth power. That's probably the easiest way that I can try and convince you. Now, if you were to do the expansion, we'll talk about that again. Uh, that would be a little bit different. Not so much the rule. All right, so using that new rule, again, as we called it, our power rule one, we're going to go ahead and, oh, my Lulu's going to join us. Nope. Uh, you've got an exponent inside, outside. So we have a base of two, exponent two times three. If you hear the piano in the background, my daughter, 10 years old, is having her virtual piano lesson with her piano teacher. She's pretty good, if I may say so. All right, so we have 2 times 3, which is an exponent of 6. Now, again, the expansion idea. You think about it this way. How many parentheses do I see? Well, the outside exponent tells me that I see three of them. So whenever the exponent's outside, that tells you how many parentheses you have. So you would write it three times. <clears throat> Now, if I wanted to expand it further, we know that 2 squared is really 2 times 2, and I've got that 3 times. So it would be 2 times 2, another 2 times 2, and another 2 times 2, which would give me a total of 6 of them as I count them up. 1, 2, 3. Again, you can tell your parents that I'm teaching you how to count. Yay. But this expansion idea is a very, very, for, very helpful for some students. Remember your whole test anxiety issues, stressful of time, and things like that, that a lot of you have been struggling with throughout the year. Now, since we are digital, you've got a little bit stress relieved on that. It's going to be a very cool, interesting experiment to see how in a different setting where you don't have the pressures of the clock or the pressures of actually being next to your friends as you're working to see your understanding. Because remember, we're always trying to work towards mastery of learning. It's not just about the grades. We want to make sure that you understand this math before you move on to high school. So remember, if you ever have any questions, you can type them up on our Google Classroom. You can send me a little video, whatever you think is best for you. All right, <clears throat> this one right here, some of you are like, boom, I got it, Miss Mario. So let's see, let's count it. One. Two, three, four, five. Very similar to when we were talking about the uh, squares and cubes. Could you get it within five snaps? So we've got our base. And remember, the base doesn't matter if it's a number or a variable. It's still just a base. And we simply multiply our exponents four times two. If you were to expand it, you ask yourself again, okay, how many parentheses do I have? The outside exponent tells me that I have two parentheses. 
w to the fourth power, that's w, 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 w. Yeah, we still like saying w's. And you have four of them, and then four more. Boom. I was like my gang signs. Boom. Not really. Don't join a gang. So we have eight of them. w to the eighth power. There we go. All right, so we have talked about the difference between adding your exponents and multiplying your exponents. What we're going to do now is talk about our product, or sorry, power rule two. This is talking about when you have more than one base, so more than one item inside parentheses. So if you notice, it's going to be kind of a combination, if you will, from the power rule one, because you have parentheses, and you also might have to add some exponents. We'll have to see. It's really just like your distributive property. So if you notice right there, distribute, we're still going to use our little arrows to show our distributive property. So whatever's outside is going to be given to the items inside. So that means the base A gets the exponent M, the base B gets the exponent M as well. And it may look something like this. So you've got a base of 4, a base of x, and that x also has an exponent. So what's that going to look like? Well, if I use my distributive property, it's going to give me 4 with the exponent from the outside. So that would be 4 squared, and we also know that 4 squared is 16. And then using the power rule 1 for the x, if I have an exponent inside outside, that's just going to multiply. So 3 times 2. So 4 squared is 16, and then 3 times 2 is a nice 6. So you can just think about your distributive property if you have more than one item inside your parentheses. Wait a minute. Is that the exact same one? That's silly of us. All right. Ignore that idea. But remember, if you wanted to, you could always expand it. Ah, uh, that's why we did this, so we could expand it. So again, the exponent outside tells me how many parentheses I have. And then when you see it this way, we know that 4 times 4 is 16. But if you notice, the x cubed and x cubed, that's the same base. So that means I would add my exponents. Or you could write them out and count them up x cubed and x cubed, you add them up, and it gives you x to the 6th power. Or you could write them out and count them up, and you still have a 6th power. All right, that was kind of silly. Same answer, though. All right, let me have you try this one. So pause the video now. All right, welcome back. So did you use your distributive property, your little arrows? Remember when we were first learning about the distributive property, I kept telling you, please show your arrows. Please show your arrows. Again, it's almost like I'm psychic, right? Or I've just been doing this quite a while. So if we give each item the exponent of 5, we would have 2 to the 5th power. Now, some of you might actually have that memorized by the end of chapter 10. If not, you can just multiply it out. And then we give the exponent from the ooh, inside, outside, 3 times 5. Don't add it. Multiply because it it's inside, outside. All right, 2 to the 5th power. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times another 2. So we have 32m to the 15th power. And then again, the expansion idea, if you wanted to try that alternative, you would write it out a total of 5 parentheses. Five parentheses. Inside would be the exact same thing as 2m to the third power. All right. Can't remember. This might be our last one. We might have more. We'll see. Ooh, look at the base for the 4. The negative sign is inside. That's key. The negative sign is inside your parentheses. So that means when I give the exponent to, ooh, three items this time, the number and then both letters. So negative 4, you got to keep it in parentheses because that negative sign is inside. If the negative sign was outside, we wouldn't worry about it. The P gets the exponent, so 5 times 2. The Q gets the exponent, so it's 1 times 2 or just a 2. All right, looking at your negative 4 inside your parentheses, we know that negative 4 multiplied by negative 4 is positive 16. And then it's P to the 10th power. 
q squared. If you wanted to, the expansion again would be to write your parentheses two times because the outside parentheses, or sorry, the outside exponent is a 2. We clearly see negative 4 multiplied by negative 4, which does give us positive 16. If you want to write out all of the letters, you can, or you could try the rule of adding the 5s together. And that gives you a 10. And then the Qs give you an exponent of 2. Exact same answer. I like the one on the left, the first rule method, as opposed to the expansion, but whatever works for you. Oh, man, we had another one. But that's okay, because, again, you're at home taking notes, practicing. All right, this one, you've got the negative sign outside. That's key difference compared to the one negative sign inside. Again, that was from lesson 10.1. So when I give the exponent to the letters and the 3, the base, I don't give it to the negative sign because it is outside, which means automatically our answer would be negative. So on a multiple choice quiz or test item, you would simply say the answer is negative. So you'd be able to eliminate any different answers. You really don't have to write the negative one if you don't want to, because we just know it's negative. All right, we've got 3 squared. A, 3 times 2 because it's inside outside, and B, 4 times 2 because it's inside outside. All right, putting it all together, I've got negative 1 times 9, which is just negative 9. A, you multiply it, 3 times 2 is 6. B, you multiply it, 4 times 2 is 8. So our answer is negative 9, A to the 6, B to the 8th power. If you were to expand it, you'd only write your negative sign once. That's how we get our negative 9 answer. You write your parentheses twice because the outside exponent is a 2. All right, this is the last one. Whoa. Actually, this isn't that bad because if you notice, we only have one base. The base is 7. So you got a few ways to do this, and it's all just going back to your power rule 1. We've got inside, outside, inside, outside, which means multiply your exponents. So let's see here, inside, outside. Whoa, if I just multiply them all because they're all inside, outside connected, I just get an exponent of 80. Now I remember one college class where my professor was saying, there's no point in having exponents that large because kids aren't really gonna use them, but it's just designed to show the simple idea of the inside, outside. So instead of a 10, we could have had it as a three. So 3 times 4 times 2. But again, it really doesn't matter because it's just basic elementary multiplication practicing your power rule 1. And let's see, is that? Yeah, that is officially it. So what you're going to be doing now is the best that you can to complete the assignment, upload it to your Google Classroom, and we'll continue to be awesome. All right, rock it, guys.